Salutations! Hello! Welcome to another Dreadlocks question and answer video where I try to answer to the best of my abilities your questions. First question this week comes courtesy of For Sarah Green. And her question is regarding dry shampoo. You can see the whole question here, but I'll just get straight into dry shampoo. I don't have a whole lot of experience with dry shampoo. My only real experience with it in a dreadlocks context is I heard you can't wash dreadlocks. Can you use dry shampoo on them? And that is not what this question is about. This question is about using dry shampoo in between normal dreadlock washing. Okay, so washing dreadlocks is not the most fun thing that someone wants to do, so the less frequently that you have to do it is often a bonus for some people. In the case of the question being asked here, it is regarding only washing your dreadlocks once a week and then using dry shampoo in between. Now what I would say about this is you do not actually need to use dry shampoo in between. When you wash dreadlocks, you need to keep a steady amount of time in between each wash and then your head gets used to it. So let's say you wash your hair every three days. As long as you keep doing that regularly, your hair gets used to it, your scalp gets used to it, and then you will only start to feel the need to wash your hair. Your hair should only start to feel dirty on the fourth day. If you slowly ease into a process of washing your hair only once a week, your hair will get used to it, your scalp will get used to it, you will not produce as high level of oils from your scalp, and so after a while you will only start to feel that your head is dirty if you miss that. So if you're getting used to washing every seven days, you should only feel dirty on the eighth day. From this, I would not say that dry shampoo is at all necessary if you're keeping to a regular schedule. With dry shampoo, I would say that it is probably safe to try it. Often people will ask me, can I use this shampoo, can I use that shampoo, and obviously I've not tried every shampoo, so I'm not going to judge every shampoo and say, yes, you can use this, yes, you can't use that. But you can experiment, and generally the worst thing that's gonna happen is it'll leave some residue, and luckily residue can be removed with a deep clean, so you can soak it out, get everything back out again. Usually, I'm not entirely sure what is exactly making up your dry shampoo, but I would imagine that it can be removed in the same way that other residues can. Okay, next question is from Bob Fari. Bob Fari wants to start his dreadlocks using the neglect method and wants to know how long his hair needs to be for the neglect method and how often he should wash his hair. For other methods such as the back comb and twist and rip, there is a sort of hair height limit. So you need a certain length before you can ride. And that's because you need a certain length to actually be able to back comb or twist and rip the hair. With neglect, there is no such restriction. If you have decided that you want to start neglect dreadlocks, you can be bald. You can go from shaved head and just begin the journey. Now, not a lot is going to happen until your hair gets to a certain length, but there is no point continuing to condition and brush your hair in the meantime time until your hair gets to a longer length. So the longer the hair, the faster it's going to lock up. But once you've decided that you want to go neglect, you just go neglect. You stop brushing, you stop conditioning and forget about it. As mentioned in the previous comment, how often to wash is really up to you. What is important is that you keep to the same amount of time between each wash. You find the period of time that you find comfortable. You know, you want to make sure that you can give your hair the amount of time it needs to properly be washed, properly be rinsed, properly be dried. If you find that you can only do that once every week, do it once every week, but stick to it. If you can do it once every two days, do it once every two days, but stick to it. D Disciple wants to know what is the most common section size for dreadlocks and what section size you would get to have thicker dreads than the average and what section size you would use for thinner than average dreadlocks. Okay, so there's a misconception that one size section is going to result in one size dreadlock. This is just not true. Okay, so if we have two dudes here, dude A, dude B, or dude A and dude B, it doesn't really matter. One has thick hair, one has thin hair. The most common section size is one inch by one inch squares. I think it's the most common section size because, you know, that's, that's a decent size and also it's easy to remember one inch by one inch. The guy with thick hair is going to get thick dreads out of one inch by one inch squares than the guy with thin hair. So thin hair with one inch by one inch is going to get thin dreads. Thick hair with one inch by one inch is going to get thick dreads. The section size just alters the size of the root. It alters how much hair the root has access to. So if you have thin hair, there's not going to be a whole lot of hair in there to give the root anyway. But if you have thick hair with the same section size, it's going to have more hair. So I cannot give you a definitive section information. It's going to depend on your hair. So if you out there have thick hair and you want thicker dreads, you can probably go with like one inch, one and a half inch, and you're going to get decently thick dreads out of that, and you're going to have quite a lot of them. If you have thin hair and you want thick dreads, you're going to have to go with one and a half inch 
or more and they're still not going to come out as particularly thick dreads because it's just not the card you've been dealt in the hair thickness department and there's not really much you can do there. Demon Senok asks, what's better, thick or thin dreads? Uh, this is a very... I don't think there's a definite answer between what's better, thick or thin dreads, because some people are going to love the look of thin dreads, other people are going to hate the look of thin dreads, and vice versa. So all I can say on this is that if you have thicker dreads, there are going to be fewer to look after. The thicker dreads that you create, the fewer you're going to be able to fit on your head, and the fewer of them there, there are going to be to look after. But they're going to take longer to wash and dry, because they're going to suck up lots of water. If you have thinner dreads, there's going to be more of them but they're not going to take as long to wash and dry because they're thinner and there's more surface area and you can squeeze them out and you can blow dry them and all that good stuff but they are going to be more work because there are more of them and they are going to be more prone to congoing and sticking together so if you have 20 thick dreads and they start to stick together not going to take all that long to separate them all if you have 60 thin dreads going to take you a long time to separate them all. Facebook question this week comes courtesy of Laura Kurzweil and her question is what's the best treatment for conditioning slash softening your dreads and how often should it be done? A lot of people are going to jump in here and say you should not condition dreads and that has truth in it in that conditioner is what you use to remove dreadlocks. Conditioner is going to undo knots so you really do not want to be conditioning young dreads but luckily the person who asked this question included the age of the dreads which is 12 months and that's bordering on the line of mature dreads and at that point you can be a little bit more... Well there's not so much risk that they're gonna fall out because if they got to 12 months then they got to 12 months. And once they get old and mature they do actually start to get a bit stiff, they get a bit coarse and they can actually benefit from being softened up. I like to soften my dreads, it makes them soft and nice. What I use is apple cider vinegar so that is found in the deep clean and so often when people with young dreads are asking about deep clean I'll be like yeah you can deep clean the dreads but be careful with the apple cider vinegar because that is gonna soften the dreads and that's not necessarily what you want with young dreads, it's what you want for old dreads. I pour a lot of apple cider vinegar straight onto my hair when I do a deep clean and I love the results. Don't really like the smell of the apple cider vinegar, it burns my eyes, but I like the effect it has on my dreadlocks. So when I condition dreads, I use apple cider vinegar. How often are you going to do this or how often are you going to want to do this is going to depend entirely on you because it's going to depend on how much apple cider vinegar you use, how diluted it is, how much you get on where. There's no sort of definite use this amount this many times this frequently. But I would maybe deep clean my hair once every two months, keeps on top of any residue and keeps my dreads from getting too coarse. I would recommend apple cider vinegar over conditioner because it's not going to leave residue. A lot of people out there with mature dreads will use conditioner on their dreads to soften them and make them nice and they'll smell like nice conditioner. But that is going to leave residue from the conditioner because the conditioner is not residue free. So then later you'd have to deep clean the residue from the conditioner back out in which you'd use apple cider vinegar. So I would personally just recommend using the apple cider vinegar in the first instance. Those are my questions this week. If you would like me to answer your question in a video in this format, just like this, you can either leave it as a comment in the comment section to this Q&A video or preferably the latest Q&A video. Write a question at the start of your comment and then it will join the queue. If you have no time for queues and you want to try your luck to get you know, the question answered straight away that week, head on over to the Lazy Dreads Facebook page, which is www.facebook.com forward slash Lazy Dreads. And each week I post up a status asking for new questions for the upcoming Q&A, and whichever question posted as a reply to that status gets the most Facebook likes will be answered that week straight away. No waiting, no queue time, just answered. As always, you can find all my stuff on lazydreads.com. You can tweet me at twitter.com forward slash lazy underscore dreads. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. Like if you liked it. I hope you'll tune in next week for your next dreadlocks question and answer video. Thanks for watching. Farewell!